We've got a stop sign coming up. Ryan needs to legally fully stop at the line. All four wheels must stop turning. Is he gonna do it? Hi there, and thanks for clicking on the video. Um, I'm here with Ryan today, and we're gonna be doing um, a mock test, our first um, full length mock test. And, um, just to know a little bit about Ryan, we've done been doing lessons, haven't we? Sort of yeah. weekly lessons for for a little bit of time. Um, and like I said, this is basically the first full length mock test. We've done sort of short kind of assessments where I've just stayed quiet, and they've gone quite well. So I thought we'd try we thought we'd try full full length mock test doing a um, a test route really to see kind of see how you get on. And um, and the main thing really I want you to take from it. Because I think a lot of time tests are seen as a negative thing. The main thing we take from it is take it as a positive thing. So anything that comes up on it, take as a positive thing. If these are things you know to learn from and to work on, and th things to um, do your best to make sure don't happen on the real test and after your test. The test is going to last about forty minutes. It will include one reversing maneuver. Potentially an emergency stop. Mm -hmm. It's not guaranteed, but could be an emergency stop. Happens in one in three tests. Include about 20 minutes of independent driving, which today we're going to be following the sat nav. Um, and basically, if you could follow the road ahead at all times, if I want, you, unless road signs or road markings direct you otherwise, if I want you to turn left or right, I'll let you know in plenty of time. But I will, will say to you. If any point you're not sure of where you're going, including when you're doing following a sat nav, please do ask. It's not something you get marked down for. You need to ask as soon as possible, um, so then you can plan the, the situation appropriately, change lanes, whatever you might need to do in good time. Um, so yeah, basically, please ask if there's any questions about where you're going, including on the sat nav bit. Um, so. Um, Basis were just quickly how the, the the marking criteria works. To be able to pass the driving test, you need to be able to get no more than fifteen driver faults. Mm -hmm. Driver faults are what you might know as minors, yeah. so things that aren't breaking the law and things that aren't really compromising safety to any great great deal. Um, and you're not allowed any um, serious or dangerous faults, which you may know as major faults. Yeah. And they're basically things that might be breaches in the law of things that are causing potential or actual danger to other road users. Um, yeah, I think that's all I need to say for the moment. Any any questions from you at the moment about... No, not that I, not about I can that. think of, mate. Yeah, so when you're ready, though, we'll head off when you're ready. And like I say, we can just head up that way, it's fine, so it's not a one-way system. And then um, we basically be heading towards the gates and then turning left onto the main road. Yep. So if you could please drive on um, when you're ready. Great observations from Ryan as he exits the car park, looking both ways before he pulls out the space, and also checking both ways before he turns towards the gates. He then makes a wise decision to stop at the giveway line as we're about to merge onto a 50 mile an hour road. He has a really good look, checking both ways at least twice, being very ready to stop if he sees a car coming, as it will be coming at very fast speeds. A right signal is not necessary here, but I didn't feel it harmed anyone or misled anyone, so no fault was given. When going around a park vehicle, the main thing is that you're observant before you steer around it. So checking the road ahead and checking the mirrors for any overtaking traffic. And Ryan clearly did this.
here in the sat nav instruction, Ryan starts to ease off his gas and checks his mirrors, being ready for the turn to come up. So really good approach speed here, and really good use of mirrors and timing of the signal. Well done, Ryan. Left on the roundabout and take the first exit. stretch of road the speed limit is 50 miles an hour and Ryan sits at about 45 miles an hour and it is safe to get to 50 he's got a nice clear straight road with no major hazards however as the stretch of road is not too long we're going to be changing this 30 soon I decide to give no fault for this it's not it's not really worth a fault sign here we can see the second exit on the roundabout is off to the right towards hand cross the instruction from the sat nav was cross the roundabout taking the second exit we must remember this instruction does not mean follow the road ahead second exit we must also look at the road signs to work out the second exit is a right turn So this just is a routine stop, um, sometimes I get you to do several times to show you can stop and start in different conditions, for example you can stop and start with traffic around you and things like that, to show you can demonstrate me you're able to do that. Um, so if you could please drive on when you're ready and just continue to follow the sat nav. This is Ryan's first drive for full. He checks his mirrors brilliantly and signals in really good time when the vehicle has overtaken him, but he forgets to check his blind spot. So this is given as a minor fault for move off safety. After 100 yards, cross the roundabout and take the second exit, B2110, High Street. If we freeze it here, we can see the second exit on the roundabout is off to the right, as per the road sign we looked at a moment ago. So Ryan does need to signal right here. Ryan's position and observations are great. However, as he needs to signal right, I give a driver fault for signals necessary. And then could you pull up on the left, yep. just behind this parked car. Um, don't worry if you're blocking the driveway slightly, just stop about maybe a car length away from them, so you've got enough room to pull away. A little bit closer. That'd be fine just there, so about a car length away from them. And again, just another routine stop to see you can stop and start in different um, in different situations to demonstrate you can do that. Um, so if you could please drive on when you're ready. check done that time, much better Ryan. Roundabout and take the first 
Tom does this next bit really well. As he enters the new road, he notices a new speed limit, national speed limit. But he also remembers it's not a target. You don't have to get to national speed limit straight away. It's a limit. At the moment, it's not safe to get to national speed limit due to the sharp bend. So Ryan has a good speed around the bend and then some really good observations and picks up his speed when he merges with the dual carriageway here. on the lorry in front of us and Ryan did really well to start checking his mirrors being ready to move lanes to attempt an overtake and if you did this in your driving test the examiner would be so pleased as it's showing you're driving like a driver not like a learner the average learner would just stay behind the lorry so great work here Ryan overtake on the dual carriageway makes sure you've got plenty of time to complete the manoeuvre. You don't want to be overtaken for example if you've got a roundabout coming up very near and then you end up being stuck in the right lane when you're looking to turn left of the roundabout. Or maybe you're looking to exit the dual carriageway soon and you wouldn't want to be in the middle lane and then you miss your exit. Now see our first board for the exit we're going to be taking and the exit is in half a mile so this is where now we generally would not overtake so if we come up behind another lorry and he's doing 60 just stay behind him at a safe distance the only time we might consider overtaking is if we come across someone who's going extremely slow maybe 30 miles an hour so that's 40 miles an hour below the limit
Ryan does well with his pedestrian crossing here. Noticing the lady's about to cross, so the lights are going to change any moment. And as they change, he then responds to them and stops at the line nicely. What's also nice is when the light goes to flash in amber, he waits for the lady to cross, and then, as it's clear, he proceeds, as that's what the law says you can do. This roundabout we've got the same instruction as earlier cross the roundabout and take the second exit however for this time second exit is following the road ahead so Ryan does correct to do no signal Good idea to secure the car there, as we're currently stopped at a level crossing, and often be stopped for quite a while. So just by securing the car, you can just relax your feet for a moment. coming up here and legally Ryan needs to fully stop so all wheels must stop turning. Is he going to do it? Yep, yeah, 
He does, a full stop. Well done, Ryan. notice Ryan checking his blind spot before he steers round parked vehicles. Whilst this is not necessary, it's not something that's marked on the UK driving test as a fault, as it's not necessarily wrong, but it's not necessarily needed. The main thing to do before you steer around a parked vehicle is check your middle and right mirror. You might decide to check your blind spot if you're steering around a parked vehicle after being stopped for a while, perhaps in heavy traffic, or, like one of the incidents you'll see shortly on this mock test. Ryan goes round this corner in gear 3, which isn't probably the best gear, but it's quite a wide turn, doesn't affect his control in any way, and he sorts the problem out immediately, so I give no fault for this. Telegraph pole now that wooden yep. that wooden pole on this park vehicle. That's great, thanks. So um, this is now going to be the um, reverse manoeuvre. Yep. Um, so what I'd like to do is drive forwards and pull up next to this park vehicle, so side mm -hmm. by side with them, and then reverse park to end up reasonably close. And parallel to the curb. Yeah. Trying to finish within two car lengths. So if we went back this far, that'd be fine. So this mm -hmm. is all distance here is fine from this park vehicle. Um, it's basically a parallel park. Yeah. Um, any questions on on that? No. So if you can please start um, whenever you're ready. Great check of the right blind spot here by Ryan, 
However, ideally, I would have liked him to check that a little bit earlier before he started reversing, meaning this would have been his second blind spot check. Important to check the right blind spot on this road, as there's driveways there, and also a fairly busy footpath where pedestrians could be walking across behind Ryan at any moment. I give a driver fault for reverse park observations due to this. Despite a slight touch to the kerb and a small adjustment needed, I decided to give no driver full, as the touch to the kerb was so minor and Ryan fixed it with so much ease, it wasn't really worth forcing in my opinion. Also overall I thought it was a really great parallel park, particularly doing very well to stay calm when that red car was waiting. Yeah, that's great, thanks. Um, so if you can then please drive on um, when you're ready. We'll have to just reverse back. Yeah, that's so fine. Yeah, do, do whatever you normally need to do. So reverse back's fine if you uh, if, if that's going to help. We have quite an interesting situation coming up here. We're following a white van and he stops right at the end of the T-junction, making it very difficult to move around him and turn at the T-junction safely. What do we do in these situations? The first thing I would do is just hold back behind the van to see what happens. See how long he stays stopped for and then assess it from there. What we're going to see is he then gets out of his van and get something out of the back and at that point I'd still stay behind him however he then walks off from his van and looks like he's going to do a delivery so he might be quite a while he's got to go and knock on the door see if they're in if they're not knock again if they're not fill out a card to say he called take a photo to say that he was there etc etc so once he walks away from his van I think the best thing to do is then just very cautiously make our way around the van to the road, turn left. Can I just wait here? And you do whatever you feel you need to do. Do what you feel safe and appropriate. There's a bit of an unusual situation, I'll grant you that. I think we will need to move around him a bit when it's safe to.
This is an example of where checking the blind spot before steering around a parked vehicle could be a good idea. As we've been sat here for a few moments and a cyclist or a pedestrian could be in the blind spot at the moment. As an instructor, the way I dealt with that situation is much how an examiner would deal with a situation like that. They would initially stay quiet and get you to think about what to do. If you ask them what to do, they might just say to you, sorry I can't help, make your own decision, do what you feel is safe. But if they see you're really struggling, they might help you. And because it's a very unusual situation, they might not even mark it as a fault. So, um, safety admitting, mm -hmm. we're going to see if we can do an emergency stop on this road. Yeah. Um, so, um, we're going to drive for the moment, and then my instruction is going to be stop. When I give that instruction, as you might imagine, I want you to stop the car as quickly and as safely as possible. Yeah. Imagine if maybe like a child had just run in front of the car. Um, before I give the instruction, I will check it safe by checking my mirror and over my shoulder. And mm -hmm. um, when I do those checks, please try not to anticipate I'm going to give the instruction because it might not be safe. Yeah. And if it's not safe for me to give the instruction, we won't do it. We might, we might then come back to it later. we we'll just see what happens. Mm -hmm. Any questions about what I'm asking you to do? No. Okay. So um, if you could please drive on um, when you're ready. Nice prompt and quick stop from Ryan, so that bit was perfect. A couple of things though, once we stop the car, we are expected to secure the car until we get further instructions, so handbrake and neutral. This is because in a real life emergency, after an emergency stop, you're likely to be a bit shaken up. So it's really strong strategy to secure the car, just to make sure you keep control and you don't roll by accident. But because the car doesn't roll at all, I don't give any fault for not securing the car. However, I do need to give a serious fault as Ryan doesn't observe correctly before pulling away. If we can imagine it's a real life emergency and we just stop for a child, the parent may be rushing out of the house to see if their child's okay. And houses are all around us. So before we pull away, we need to be checking every single house. So we need to be checking our left blind spot our left mirror, the road ahead, the middle mirror, the right mirror, and the right blind spot to make sure it's all clear and there's no hazards around us. Okay, thank you. Please drive on when you're ready. Are you pleased to hear? I won't ask you to do that again.
if you could please then drive on uh, when you're ready. At the end of the road, turn right. Turn left. At the roundabout, follow the road ahead, a second exit. Some more great judgement skills here from Ryan. Great positioning on these roundabouts, keeping tight to the outside lane. Another good overtaking decision here by Ryan, driving like a driver.
very close to each other. I like to follow the road ahead at the first roundabout and then turn right at the second roundabout, please.
great position on this roundabout, noticing you choose the right lane, as the left one's left only. And then as he enters the roundabout, he follows the lines, and that takes him to the outside lane. Some good steering to keep in that lane. And if you could just drive forwards into a bay, anyone would just drive forwards and nose first into a bay somewhere. Then um, switch your engine off, uh, make yourself comfortable, take your belt if you want, open your window, get some air in if you want to do. Just give me a, uh, a moment or two. So that's the end of the test. Mm -hmm. I've basically got a really tough call to make, really. Yeah. Because, um, like the people watching the video, pretty agree about hope. I thought overall it was a brilliant drive, really good drive. There's one thing that basically is going to potentially warrant a serious fault though, mm -hmm. and it's to, to related to the emergency stop. Yeah. And basically, after the emergency stop, after the emergency stop, we need to secure the car, which isn't really the serious thing, but you mm -hmm. do need to re-secure the car after the emergency stop. But the main thing is we need to really be doing a thorough check round before you pull away. Yeah. And we just sort of basically had a little, you just basically had a quick glance in your mirrors before you pulled away. We really need to have a really thorough check round. Mm -hmm. um, even though there's nothing going to be, it's unlikely to be something there, we're obviously trying to simulate a real life situation. In a real life situation, yeah. you really want to secure the car, make sure it's not going to go anywhere, it's not going to roll or anything like that. If your feet get a little bit panicky after you've stopped for that child. And make sure their parents not running out after them before you pull away and park up or whatever you might do. So, and I think I'm just going to go from the guy in terms of the driving test. I think that would be a serious fault. Yeah. The last overall, the drive was really, really good. Mm -hmm. I gave basically three minor faults overall. Um. And to be honest, two of them were actually literally within the first two or three minutes of the test. Yeah. Because um, there, there's only literally three of them, I'll just quick go through them now. The first minor fault was just when we pull, when we were going to pull up on the left on that busier road mm. near the beginning, we had that white van behind us, yeah. um, we just missed checking our blind spot before pulling away. Yeah. Every other single time you did it though, but just that one time we missed it. Mm -hmm. So that goes as a minor fault for move off safety. Yeah. Um, signals necessary. Uh, the mini roundabout after we pulled away from there, yeah. we do really need to be signalling right there. Mm -hmm. There's a right turn, even at second exit is a right turn. Yeah. Um, and reverse park observations, try to get your observations happening before you move, 
not as after you've started moving a bit because we have a little bit of habit of moving then checking rather than checking before moving. Um, so I suppose put minor fault for reverse park. R means on the road, parallel park, and observations. Um, so yeah, but like so overall, it was a really good drive. Mm-hmm. It's almost just a technicality with the emergency stop because yeah. we need to get you to recreate it as if it was like a real life situation. I know it's difficult because it's not, but we've got to simulate it as much as we can. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, but no, that's a really decent drive though. Yeah. Just unfortunately, that one there, I think would, they would probably put down as a serious fault. Mm-hmm. Um, so, any questions at the moment that you've got? I don't think so. Okay. So, um, well, I'm going to turn the camera off and then we'll leave it, mm-hmm. um, leave it that moment for the camera.